Howdy folks and welcome back to the Luminary Shop. I'm Rick and most of you know that I took a little time off and spent some time floating the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. My 17 year old grandson Patrick went along and we went with a company called ASRA, Arizona Raft Adventures. It's really a first class outfit and I highly recommend them if you're planning to do that sort of an adventure. But it's good to be back home and back in the shop and working on carriage lamps. Now most of you who have been watching these videos know that I'm in the middle of a project rebuilding and restoring a pair of late 1800s hearse lamps. Now in the last video I built the tapered stems for the replacement tails and in this video I'm going to go ahead and make the chucks and the spinnings to complete those tails. Now I tried to repair this compound spinning where someone in the past had tried to take it apart for whatever reason I don't know but they ruined the top spinning by prying up the outer edge and then when I went and tried to spin it back down the lower spinning crushed in the pressure of my lathe and it crushed along the lines of stress cracks and age cracks so these pieces really weren't viable anyway so I've had to add two more pieces to what I have to make to restore these lamps. So let's go ahead and get back with it. I have to make five new spinnings for this project. So I'll use this piece of hard rock maple, cut it up and laminate it back together so that I can make spinning chucks for these five pieces. I seem to have a few visitors out back of the shop. I'll make sure the grain runs in opposing directions on each layer of these chucks.
my brother-in-law Dave's handy dandy glue spreaders made out of old hacksaw blades. Fifteen hours of cure time seems to be quite sufficient for this Tight Bond 3 glue. That's the threaded adapter for my spinning lathe sitting there on the table of the drill press. I'll Drill and tap the center of each one of these chucks to fit the threads on that adapter. I'll mark the taps so that I can be sure that the adapter will thread all the way in and shoulder up onto the chucks. I use both a tapered tap to start the threads and a bottoming tap to carry them all the way to the bottom of the hole.
Well, now that I have the chucks that I need, I'll go ahead and turn them down to the shapes that I need, and I'll spin the shells over them that I need to complete these tails. I've already used this chuck for two parts in the heads of these lamps, which I'll show you in the next video. For now, I'm going to concentrate on the spinnings that I need for the tails. This piece has work hardened and requires annealing by heating to a dull red in order to spin it down tightly to the chuck and spin the rounded edge. The discoloration of that shell is a result of that annealing process. I'm cutting back the edge of this chuck so that when I spin the outer edge of the shell I can return it back to a smaller diameter. Once I do this, this chuck is not suitable for making this part anymore. I'm going to use this chuck to duplicate that piece that's in the lower right hand corner of your screen. You can see that it's made of two spinnings that are spun together and the outer ends of each spinning are just a little different.
Well, that's basically the first shell for our compound spinning. And now I'll go about reshaping the chuck just a little bit for the second half. This shell requires a neck down portion in the middle. So I'm going to have to cut out the end of the chuck in order to remove the shell once I get it spun to shape. Kind of similar to the outer edge on that first spinning that we made.
The hole at the bottom of this shell is cut to the correct diameter so that it fits snugly to the tapered tail. Well, that's about all we'll get done in this video. Next time, I'll work on spinning the shells for the heads of these lamps. And maybe we can get started on doing some English wheel work and make two new doors and liners for them. Until then, stay well and thanks for watching.